Hello! Mei Lin Lee is 13 years old. She goes to school in Toronto, Canada, where her family moved from China. Here, they continue to honor their ancestors' traditions, which require children to be grateful to their parents and obey them in everything they do. But Mei Lin does not lose heart. She manages to be an exemplary daughter, as well as a secret modern music fan, and she even discusses boys with her besties. However, her life is about to change dramatically, and not in the way she expects. The family legends about the red pandas turn out not to be legends at all. May recently turned 13, and now she is completely independent. She does what she wants, says what she wants, and wears what she wants. She doesn't even mind looking ridiculous when doing silly things. She is greeted by her best friends, Miriam, Priya, and Abby. After school, they run off together to see a local handsome shopkeeper, Devin. However, May prefers the five singers of the four-town boy band. The other girls like them too, and together they sing and dance to May's favorite song. They're going to karaoke in the evening, but May refuses. She's in a hurry to help her mother with the house chores and runs home. Although her friends think that she has been brainwashed, May takes her responsibilities like an adult and carries them out with pride. Their family runs Toronto's oldest Chinese temple. Her mother Min praises her daughter's school success, and together they pray to their distant ancestor, San Yi, a woman of many talents who has devoted her life to caring for the red pandas, the symbol of the Lee family. Instead of honoring a god, we honor our ancestors. And not just the dudes either. They welcome visitors, while May's father, Jin, prepares dinner. The TV announces the upcoming arrival of Four Town in Canada, and Mom criticizes the band, not knowing that her daughter is their fan. Later, May's going to do her homework, but gets distracted by drawing a boy in the margins. Suddenly, she realizes that it reminds her of Devin a lot, and her wild imagination begins to quickly spiral out of control. Mei Lin gets under the bed, where she draws one after another romantic scenes of herself and the boy. That's when her mother knocks on the door, and accidentally finds her daughter's inappropriate drawings. The woman also recognizes the store clerk, and assumes what she sees is something that has already happened in real life. She ignores May's pleas to stop, and takes her to the store to unleash a barrage of threats on Devin for abusing her daughter. As evidence, Min dumps the drawings on the table. The scene is witnessed by the customers, including Tyler, May's classmate. The girl feels extremely embarrassed and wants to sink through the floor from shame, but hides her emotions from her mother. At home, she blames herself in every possible way for drawing those sketches and feels that she has let her mother down. May suffers from nightmares during her sleep, and in the morning she finds a huge red panda looking at her in the mirror. She panics, and her screams are heard by her mother, who thinks that the daughter has suddenly grown up and rushes to get feminine hygiene products, a heating pad, and painkillers. It's going to be okay. No, it's not. Will you just get out? Excuse me? The girl says she is a horrible red monster and hides from her mother behind the bathroom curtain. Min urgently retreats to the kitchen, and May manages to sneak away. She tries to fall asleep and calm down, and this allows her to get rid of her ears and tail, and then turn into a human completely. She is very happy about this, and from the rush of emotions, she immediately gets covered back in fur. Mei Lin takes control of her emotions, and the only thing left from the panda is her bright red hair. To hide it, the girl now keeps her toque on. She keeps her cool with all her might, despite the fact that the whole school is discussing her embarrassing incident with the drawings of Devon. But from Tyler's apt taunts, the girl grows a tail, and the intrusive mother, who is rushing to school with the pads the girl forgot at home, finally drives her daughter to burst. A huge panda smashes up the classroom and runs outside, and only Min has time to notice what has happened. Some students notice the beast before it can leave the school. Passersby in the street scurry away from the monster. She doesn't know where to hide. Min's driving her car to follow her daughter. After causing an accident on the road, Mei makes her way home through the rooftops, with Min trailing after her. It turns out that this kind of magic is no surprise to her parents, even though they expected the transformation to happen much later, long ago. When all the men went off to war, their maternal ancestor Sun Yi found herself alone with her daughters. She prayed to the gods to help her protect her children, and they answered her request by allowing her to transform into a wild beast. She was able to fend off bandits, protect her village, and save her family from ruin. 
The woman then passed this gift onto her daughters, but to use it one must be able to control one's emotions. The same also happened to men, except that in Canada, this ability became too much of an inconvenience. Mei Lin is furious again at not being informed of such a terrible curse, and in a fit of anger, tries to tear apart the portrait of Sun Yi. Her parents try to calm down their daughter and tell her about a ritual that will permanently seal the panda spirit in an amulet similar to the one Min wears around her neck. The only problem is that the ceremony must take place during the red moon, and it's a month away. Until then, Mei Lin must do her best to control her emotions so that she becomes a beast as rarely as possible, because every transformation will complicate the upcoming exorcism ritual. It has never happened yet that the panda could not be sealed, but in theory it might occur if Mei Lin does not follow her mother's advice and allows her emotions to take over. And she can't let her family down by becoming the first one to fail. All of the daughter's belongings are taken out of her room, leaving only a large mattress. Before parting, the father says that red brings good luck. The parents leave the room, and through the door, May hears her mother say with disgust that no one should see her daughter like that. The girl cries hugging her squishy toy and falls asleep, turning back into a panda. In the morning, she desperately rips her fur off and slams against the walls to get rid of the beast's appearance. All her efforts are in vain because it only adds to her emotions and tears. Suddenly, her friends appear at the window. Being excited, they shout that the Four Towns concert will take place in Toronto on the 18th. The girls are shocked when a huge panda grabs them and pulls them inside. He's a red panda! Sick. You're so fluffy! You're so fluffy! I've always wanted a tail. May tries to explain that she got it from her mother and that it will pass soon, but she cannot hold back tears as she recalls all the conditions of the exorcism ritual. There will not be a red moon until the 25th, so the girl will not be able to go to the concert. She cries bitterly, and her friends support her by humming May's favorite song. The panda joins them, and when her friends hug her, it calms the girl down, returning her human form. It turns out there is a way to control the transformation, and the friends persuade May to join them at the concert. Her mother knocks on the door, and the girl pushes her friends out the window. The parents begin to test their daughter, trying to provoke strong emotions in every way they can. Each time, May recalls the strong friendship of her friends, who will come to her aid in time of need, and completes all the tasks successfully. However, her mother still forbids her to go to the concert, because the emotions there would be too strong. Besides, the woman doesn't even consider these songs to be music. The father tries to stand up for his daughter, but he is too timid to go against his overbearing wife. Nevertheless, May holds back her frustration and quietly walks away. Suddenly, the phone rings. It's May's grandmother, who has seen her granddaughter on the news. Now it's Min, who like a misbehaving teenager, tries to hide from her mother in terror. She picks up the phone anyway, and gets even more frightened by the fact that grandma is on her way to visit them to check on them. Meanwhile, the girls meet in PE class. They've all been denied going to the concert. My parents said I could go when I'm 30. Mine called it stripper music. What's wrong with that? At this point, May and her classmates notice that her mother is patrolling outside the school, watching her daughter through binoculars. Tyler begins to taunt her, and the girl becomes angry. Her arm turns into a powerful paw, and she launches a ball with tremendous force, smashing the school window. Her friends take May to the bathroom, where they discuss how to trick their parents into going to the concert. Abby asks May Lynn to transform into a furry beast for a moment and give her a hug. May imagines her idol and fulfills the request. This is when a couple of shocked classmates notice them, but it turns out that they too really want to look at the cute animal, and they're even willing to pay for it. The offer turns out to be very timely, because one ticket to Four Town costs as much as $200. The friends start doing photo shoots with the red panda and even selling all sorts of cute souvenirs. They hide the affair from their parents using a made-up math club. Mei Lin finds it increasingly easy to turn into the beast and back, and soon they just have $100 left to raise. But the concert is already on Saturday, and Mei is very worried. Moreover, Tyler shows up and threatens to tell her mother on them. The guy demands to help him organize a birthday party and is willing to pay $200 for the panda's presents. The friends are skeptical about the proposal, but May persuades them and on Friday night goes to Tyler's house. As usual, she cites the math club as an excuse, but suddenly her mother decides to go with her. While Min's daughter tries unsuccessfully to stop her, the grandmother and four aunts show up on their doorstep. The women immediately surround the girl to share their experiences and advice on the upcoming ritual. 
May is hopelessly late to the party and tries to sneak out saying she's exhausted, but the grandmother manages to slink into her bedroom. I know how hard it is to keep the beast in. It feels so good to let it out. She has found red panda fur in the yard and warns that with each transformation, the ritual will become more difficult to perform. Grandmother is convinced that the panda's appearance has hopelessly damaged the relationship between her and Min, and she doesn't want history to repeat itself. Mei Lin listens to her, but runs away from home anyway. However, she shows up at the party wearing a cardboard panda costume, which becomes a huge disappointment to everybody. Tyler cancels the deal, and to avoid seeing her friends cry, Mei transforms, promising that this is the last time, and the fun begins. Meanwhile, the grandmother leaves, instructing Min to keep an eye on her daughter. The woman enters May's room and accidentally finds panda souvenirs under the bed, discovering the girl's escape as well. The unsuspecting friends celebrate their victory on Tyler's roof. Miriam asks what will happen if May doesn't exercise the panda, but the girl can't even imagine this. Her parents have simply left her no options. Suddenly, they hear on the radio that Four Town will be in Toronto a week later the same day that May is supposed to undergo the ritual. Abby has mixed up the dates, and May Lim becomes overwhelmed by panic and despair. She cannot hold back her emotions and turns to the panda. This is when she is spotted by Tyler, who demands to work off her earnings and give his guests a ride on her back. When May refuses, the birthday boy starts insulting her family, and the panda pounces on him, losing control completely. Tyler begins to cry, and the guests back away in fear from the furious beast. This was the most unfortunate moment for Min to appear, and she witnesses the scene. Later, the mother apologizes to Tyler's parents and blames May's friends for spoiling her daughter. She is a good girl, and you've taken advantage of her. May, tell her. But May Lin doesn't have the courage to shatter mom's illusion that benefits her, and she silently goes home, betraying her friends. A week later, Miriam, Abby, and Priya buy themselves tickets to the show, while May prepares for the ritual with her family. She goes to get dressed, and her father notices that his daughter is in a bad mood. In the basement, he finds the video camera, which the friends have been using to record their merry songs and dances. Jin approaches his daughter and asks her about what he has seen. May is embarrassed and immediately wants to delete the video, but her father does not let her. He tells her about the panda Min, who was the biggest of them all. The man saw her transform when they had a huge quarrel with her grandmother. The woman was against Jin's relationship with her daughter. Father says that even if some sides of her personality seem chaotic and dangerous, it is still possible to live in peace with them. He gives Mei Lin the choice of what to do with her panda, but notes that he finds this side of his daughter very funny. The girl steps into a white circle for the ritual. The family begins to chant and the shaman sends Mei into the astral dimension. There, the girl sees the first of her ancestors who transformed into a panda, San Yi. The woman creates a mirror in which Mei sees her reflection. To get rid of the panda, she has to go through it, which proves to be a difficult task. Mei pushes forward with all her might and only has one step to take when she turns around and sees the panda, who has given her so many pleasant moments with her friends. She rushes back and returns to her family in the panda's form. She declares that she is keeping the panda shocking her relatives. Everyone tries to restrain the fleeing May, but she breaks free and runs away. In the scuffle, Min falls and her red amulet cracks. It no longer holds the panda inside, and the woman loses control of herself. But May Lin is already long gone. She masterfully uses her skills to get to the concert and find her friends there. She apologizes for letting them down. I've been like obsessed with my mom's approval my whole life. I couldn't take losing it. Miriam is still upset, but quickly exchanges anger for mercy. All this time, she has been taking care of May's Tamagotchi, which she lost at the party. The friends hug, and to their surprise, see Tyler among the crowd of girl fans. The boy band takes the stage to the applause of the audience, while the huge beast approaches the stadium. Min, in panda's form, climbs through the roof, scaring everybody inside. Jin and the relatives arrive on the scene, but the monster grabs Mei and begins to scold her, destroying the stage. The daughter can't stand yet another interference in her life and bites her mother on the finger, breaking free. She screams that she likes boys already and her mother won't stop her. I like loud music! I like gyrating! I'm 13! Deal with it! The daughter distracts Min while the family draws a circle on the ground and prepares a ritual to banish the huge beast. 
May dodges all of her mother's physical and emotional attacks, staying true to herself, and eventually knocks the clumsy monster over. Min faints, but half of her body is outside the circle, preventing them from completing the ritual. Mei Lin attempts to pull her inside to no avail, and Grandma, along with the aunts, also smash their jewelry, unleashing their pandas. They pull Min inside the circle, and Fortown and Mei's friends join in their chanting, which helps give the shaman enough energy to send all the pandas into the astral dimension. Mei meets her mother there, who looks about her age. Min is crying because she accidentally hurt her mother in a fit of rage. She is very tired of being perfect, and so is Mei. The girl understands exactly how her mother feels and encourages her. Together, they go to the mirror, where Min gets her age back. The grandmother and aunt are already waiting for them there, and Min uses the opportunity to ask her mother for forgiveness. The grandma replies that she is not angry at her daughter at all and will never stop loving her. The women enter the portal one by one. The girl is the last one left, and her mother invites her to come in after her. But Mei has already decided that the panda is a part of her that she doesn't want to let go of. The only thing that scares her is the gap in the relationship with her mother that might arise if she makes that choice. Min is afraid of that too, but feels that Mei Lin wants to make everyone happy and is too hard on herself. If I taught you that, I'm sorry. The mother supports her daughter in making the decision on her own and leaves. Mei is left with the spirit of Sun Yi who embraces and lifts the girl high up. They touch noses under the moon, and Mei returns home. Mei and Min continue to do guided tours at the temple, which people now visit with more enthusiasm as they can look at the magic panda and to buy a t-shirt or a stuffed tail. However, this time they will have to raise a lot more money to rebuild the stadium after the panda apocalypse. Mei Lin goes out to spend time with her friends. She has let her inner beast out, and she doesn't regret it at all. As always, you can find the name of the movie in the video description. In the meantime, let us know in the comments. What's your relationship with your inner beast? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that more awesome stories come out as often as possible.